the Alpine mountains of Scandinavia. It's an unforgiving environment where the harsh winter creates a seemingly lifeless void of ice and snow. But one small creature beats the odds. And every few years, it emerges unexpectedly from under the snow and becomes a social media sensation. The Norway lemming might just be the most famous and misunderstood animal in this part of the world. And for all it knows, it's a ferocious rodent with a killer instinct. No doubt in the Nordic mountains, the lemming is the little giant. Then the lemmings are gone. Seasons pass without any sign of them. So where do they go? And when will they reappear? Stretching 1,700 kilometers across Norway and Sweden, the Scandinavian Alpine region is a world created by the glaciers of the last ice age. Straddling the Arctic Circle, this is a land defined by ice and snow, where winter reigns for most of the year. Winter temperatures can plunge below minus 40 Celsius, immobilizing the water by nature's own sculpting craft. Harsh enough to impede most life, still, this is where we find some of the world's oldest trees, with roots and clones almost 10,000 years old. But if life above the snow is a challenge, life beneath is a different story. Lemmings. The Norway lemming is a small rodent that lives only in Scandinavia. During winter, it feeds on mosses under the snow. And while they're mostly solitary animals, winter circumstances often force them to congregate. Under a warming blanket of snow, they find refuge from the weather and potential predators. As tension grows in cramped quarters, some young males get the urge to take a daring hike. in hopes of finding a welcoming female around the corner. The young male is quick on the draw and leaves nothing to chance. But he soon finds he wasn't invited to the party. The lemmings build up their populations quietly under the snow. In some years, their numbers can explode. And this is what helped create the myth about lemmings that lives on unabated. Just why the lemming population peaks every fourth year or so is still a bit of a mystery. But when it happens, it sets the scene for a spectacular lemming year in the Nordic tundra. The raven is ever-present in this environment, tolerating the freezing temperatures with ease. The red fox, however, has benefited from climate change, expanding its territories from the forests to the tundra at higher altitudes. The red fox's intrusion into this land has made it a player in the realm of the lemming. When the sun returns, temperatures rise, while foxes and ravens await the next chapter in the lemming story.
And this next chapter brings one more player to the surface. The Arctic Fox. Having survived here since the Ice Age, the Arctic Fox now faces regional extinction. There are only three to four hundred adult Arctic foxes left in Scandinavia. Subsisting mostly on lemmings, it has suffered from a lack of prey for decades. Good lemming years have become rare, but hopefully this year will be different. But she won't go hunting just yet. It's too dangerous to be exposed to predators in broad daylight. Instead, she relies on a stash of lemmings she caught earlier, now hidden in a natural fridge close to her den. Even in a year with a sparse lemming population, her survival chances are good. But for her potential offspring, a good lemming year is a must. If she's lucky, as many as a dozen pups can be born and survive. In a bad year with few rodents, it can be a total loss. Most other animals leave these mountains in the autumn, migrating to the forests at lower altitudes. Despite the enchanting beauty, the taiga forest can still be a forbidding place. Reindeer spend the winter here. Grazing now means finding the right forest because their food hangs from the trees, lichen. Lichen is their winter staple, but finding it is no easy feat because it's cold and the reindeer need to eat a lot. The food is sparse and sometimes hard to reach. Their hooves are like shovels that can lay the ground bare and allow the reindeer to reach the lichen under the snow. For the much taller moose, deep snow is no obstacle. Feeding on needles and twigs, their food supply is more abundant. Still, it's a trying time for all, and they can face starvation and death at any time. In the twilight darkness of the long winter nights, a phantom of the forest benefits from the spoils of winter. The elusive wolverine is a bad hunter, but a very effective scavenger. It will return to this reindeer carcass many times. After months of low light, the sun climbs higher in the sky and its signals change. Deep in the genes of many species, evolving over thousands of years, the light triggers an urge to move. Scandinavian reindeer are semi-domesticated. For most of the year, they live as wild animals in the vast expanses of the north. But for the spring migration back to the Alpine highlands, they are herded by their owners, the Sami, the indigenous people of the north. Reindeer husbandry dates back hundreds of years. The knowledge is passed from generation to generation. 
They follow ancient migration routes over frozen rivers and lakes for hundreds of kilometers. It's a long trek. It can take up to two weeks to reach the mountains. And the Sami must time the migration just right. Early enough, so the river ice is still thick enough to travel on, but late enough, so the pastures are bare when they arrive in the faraway highlands. The bonds of winter are finally fully broken. When the thaw starts, the ground is still frozen. Water saturates the land, creating a patchwork of streams, temporary ponds and wetlands. It's a disaster for the confused lemmings. The protective roof of snow is gone, exposing them to predators. They're desperate to seek new shelter, but they also must deal with the water on the flooded tundra. On the search for new territory, their movement in the spring sparked a popular myth that this was a mass exodus. This is most likely not true. What people have seen has been exaggerated. Of course, they don't intend to kill themselves, this is simply their migratory behavior. Lemmings on the move need to cross bodies of water, not to commit suicide, but just to get to the other side. Lemmings are good swimmers. Their fur holds a lot of air, keeping them buoyant. Of course, some will fail. And again, this feeds the myth of the suicidal lemming. Having survived one nightmare, the lemmings soon come face to face with another, the long-tailed skewer. This master flyer has spent the winter near the South Polar region, on the other side of the world. Now, it must find nesting ground to continue its life cycle during a very short summer period. They're out on a scouting flight. If there's enough food, which means enough lemmings, they will stay. If not, they'll depart and come looking again next year. is on, and it's shaping up to be a good lemming year. The red fox is getting wind of this too, and it scours the land in search of food, venturing higher up in the mountains, to areas where it was scarce in the past. This time, the long-tailed skewer is the successful hunter. But the skewers are not real raptors. They lack the talons and beaks of birds of prey. Devouring a lemming becomes hard work, and the couple teams up to dismember the prey. 
working together creates a strong bond before the start of the nesting season. Thawing is a process lasting weeks and months, well into the summer. The rivers run free again, becoming a majestic force of the north. Moose also migrate back to the highlands. But unlike the reindeer that team up with the Sami people, they must find their way by themselves. The swollen, icy rivers look quite threatening. The moose use age-old shallow crossings, where many generations of moose have made it safely to the other side. Still, it's no easy decision. They're good swimmers, but the strong current could easily sweep them away. Safely across, they continue. The increased water flow of the millions of creeks running down from the hillsides sends signals downstream. It's an open invitation to fish waiting to perform their annual upstream migration. It's been four years since this grayling hatched in this small brook. For the first time in its life, it returns to spawn. But it will not come alone, and competition for the best territory and the most fertile females will incite conflict. Males arrive first in large numbers, and with their dorsal fins turned red, they signal they are prepared to attract the females and defend their chosen underwater territory. And the battles are quite fierce. A few days later, the females swim into the area. This is what the males with the red fins were waiting for. The couples look for a bottom substrate where the females can easily deliver their eggs. Initially used to flash down a partner, the dorsal fins are then used to brace receptive females during release of milt and roe. A female can produce as many as 20,000 eggs, but it will be a few weeks before they hatch, and several more weeks before the offspring, too, swim downstream. The graylings only stay here to mate, and after only a few days, the adults retreat to the lakes and big rivers.
The reindeer are still on the move towards the alpine meadows. But before leaving the birch forest, they use its scant protection to give birth close to the tree line. With predators lurking nearby, it's imperative that the calf gets up on its legs immediately. But it's not that easy. Once on its feet, it can also start suckling. Reindeer calves are usually single births. Within a few days, the herd must be on the move again, with the small ones floundering around. The reindeer follow their instincts as pastures open up in their higher mountain areas. It's hard to believe that the little giants of these mountains, the lemmings, play a significant role in the lives of the reindeer, but they do. With the snow melting away, their bustling activity under it has left unmistakable evidence of their presence. The droppings of the ever-hungry rodents cover large patches of the tundra that's otherwise poor in nutrients. The added fertilizer will possibly increase plant growth to the benefit of the reindeer and other grazing animals. Finally, the reindeer calves have reached the summer pastures for the first time. It's still early and food is scarce. The reindeer must rely on lichen until green plants start to grow. This is a dangerous time for the calves. Out in the open, they're in the predator's sights. For the golden eagle, a young calf is easy prey. There is safety in the herd. Falling behind is a deadly mistake. of the reindeer calves may die in the first two months of their lives. The majority of them fall prey to the different predators that rule this land. Summer is here. North of the Arctic Circle, the sun shines 24 hours a day now. Plants and animals make the most of the short season, especially the busy lemmings, whose lifespan is only about two years. They stay active around the clock grazing as much as they can between short periods of sleep. They don't dig their own burrows, but create cozy nests in cracks and holes. Soon the reproductive frenzy is in full swing. A female lemming can give birth to as many as 12 young ones in a brood. The babies are born blind and furless, they grow quickly on the milk provided by their busy mother. The youngsters leave their nest after only two weeks and may already reproduce before they're one month old. Conditions are favorable, the population grows quickly and the female can become pregnant again. The next litter could be due in three to four weeks. After the simple diet of mosses through the winter, fresh grass is a real treat. With thousands and thousands of nests scattered over the tundra, the population literally explodes.
And so the story repeats itself, in a good year, perhaps with six litters. Nearby, another animal broadcasts its own Fox News. The message? Life is good for the Arctic fox this year. The female heads out on a hunt. The Arctic fox appears in different color varieties. Some, like this female, are very dark. She will turn as white as snow in the winter. Around the den, there are obvious signs that this is a good year for the foxes. The large number of lemmings has given the Arctic fox a chance to reproduce. They have six healthy pups. Not an extraordinary number, but it's good for a species that has been on the verge of extinction in Scandinavia for many decades. In a bad lemming year, almost all of the pups may die. But for now, it looks promising. The den is a burrow with a maze of tunnels under the ground. The site can be very old, with generations of Arctic foxes making it their home. Some believe this Arctic fox castle may have been occupied for hundreds of years. For the bravest pups, it's time to explore the surroundings. Oops, what's this? Cold water is a bit of a surprise for this pub. And worse, now he's stuck alone on the wrong side of the creek. But they learn from their mistakes, and the pub finds a safer and drier way back to the den. The Arctic fox den is greener than its surroundings because the animals fertilize the soil with their waste and the carcasses of their prey. Thanks to the masses of lemmings this year, life flourishes on the vast tundra. With plenty of food available, the long-tailed skewer has decided to breed this summer. The young have already hatched. When a pale brown color Arctic fox cruises the area, the chicks could be in danger. The mother signals to the bigger chick to leave the nest. It's safer to hide nearby. But the skewer is a fierce fighter. And this time, the fox loses the battle. The youngest one-day-old chick is still in the nest, and the female quickly covers it against the cold wind. The older chick has ventured out into the surrounding area. Perhaps the next day, his sibling too will leave the nest, and they will disperse. Their parents will still feed them for several weeks in the undergrowth. This behavior can increase their chance of survival. This time, the mother still wants him back. And of course, the older chick still prefers the warm protection under mama's wing. And to be the first to get food, when it's delivered. They feed on lemmings when they're available, but they're not picky and will devour other small animals, fish, insects, and even berries.
At last, summer is in full swing in the Scandinavian mountains. While the reindeer have migrated up to the tundra, the moose prefer to stay in the wooded areas where they find plenty of food. In the middle of the summer, flowers blossom and insects are abundant. And the lemmings just keep doing what they always do, eat and breed. Summer temperatures can climb above a balmy 25 degrees Celsius. For the reindeer, this is too much, and they often seek cooling shelter on the remaining snow fields, where they also escape mosquitoes. The male Arctic fox returns to the den. The pups eagerly await his return, growing fast and constantly hungry. They beg for food, but this time there's nothing to be had. The male seems more annoyed by the attention. This is the result of not trying harder with the skewers. But there is still hope. The female returns. And her hunting went a lot better. She's got a mouthful of lemmings. A good lemming year with successful reproduction gives this threatened species a new lease of life. The male heads out for another try. Maybe this time he'll be lucky. The pups are almost as big as the female now. And with nasty bites, she warns them that they'll have to leave the den someday soon. Lemmings are now emerging everywhere. They seem to occupy every available crack. With their perfect camouflage, they look like tiny living rocks on the run. And indeed, they are on the move, looking for more available territory and new partners. The new generation is out and hungry. They eat a lot. The growing lemming population eventually eats all the food they need for their survival. Available food, rather than the abundance of predators, could be the reason for their psychical appearance. And this could be one explanation for the mythological migration of lemmings. But it's not a total myth. Lemmings do migrate, and moving down to lower elevations near the tree line gives them a better chance of survival. Food is still abundant here, and a first wave of lemmings is already coming. In years when their numbers explode, there can be as many as 150 lemmings in an area the size of a football pitch. With the population density so high, lemmings defend their turf. Don't mess with a stressed out pregnant mum. This is her territory now. This is some of the last true wilderness in Europe. With most of the land far away from population centers, the threat to the region is of a different kind. Climate change 
is the new culprit. Glaciers are retreating, leaving land bare for the first time in thousands of years. With the temperature changes, the present tundra will no longer be a barren land above the tree line. Forests are already on the move, with tall spruce trees climbing ever higher. And the warmth allows for one special individual tree to finally reach for the sky. It's a single Norway spruce, famously known as Old Chico. It started growing nearly 10,000 years ago at the end of the Ice Age. Over the millennia, it survived by creeping along the ground, not sending a tree shoot above the snow, where chilly winds would kill it. Clones have covered large areas, with the original root system still intact. Today, Old Chico is a monument of changing times to come. Lemming populations used to peak every four years. Today, these peaks are fewer and further apart. Even slight changes in climate have a drastic impact on animals living here. Some will benefit. Some will suffer. It looks like the lemming could be in for a rough ride. The peak summer season ends in August. The reindeer have begun to rut, with the big bull controlling his harem of females. He must defend all flanks, preventing females from straying too far and keeping younger bulls at bay. It's work around the clock. And a very exhausting exercise. what's going on around him. Young bulls engage in fighting, preparing themselves to take on the real heavyweight champion. But for now, there's no doubt who the champ is here. That's settled. Back to business. The autumn brings another change to the mountains. When the green chlorophyll in the leaves of deciduous trees breaks down and disappears, the remaining reds and yellows dominate for a short period of time. In peak years, with food resources depleted, the lemmings migrate even further down the slopes and deep into the forests. No doubt there is more food for them there. Feeding mostly on mosses, they will find grass, sedge and seeds in abundance.
but they will soon also realize they have competitors. Wood lemmings, a close relative, one of the rodents to contend with. This is the queen of lemmings, ruling in a matriarchal society, where as many as 75% of lemmings are females. And some of the females give birth only to females. When their population increases, they too can face starvation, which forces them to migrate. And under those circumstances, the pressure from invading relatives is another threat. The Norway lemmings desperately try to settle down, but this is a strange, unknown world for them. Everything looks so different. What starts out as a friendly encounter with their cousins soon turns hostile. The much larger Norway lemming could easily kill the wood lemming. But such occasions are few and far between. Now, this is different. This is an animal that can kill both. The lemmings share this forest with the brown bear. But in the autumn, the bear prepares for hibernation and is focused on gorging itself on berries. In fact, it's so focused, it doesn't even notice there are other, much smaller critters around. It's been a good year for the Norway lemmings and for the animals that feed on them. But for all the lemmings that came this far from the tundra, this is also the end of the road. Outside their primary range, they face more predators, more challenges, and the forest that fed them now becomes their graveyard. In lemming years, the masses of exhausted lemmings fall victim to disease and the dangerous crossing of rivers and lakes. Maybe it's images like this that fed the old myth about lemmings committing suicide. But the truth is simpler than that. It's just a tough environment, and circumstances take their toll. And the lemming year has come to an end. The very few surviving lemmings now depend on a good winter, with plenty of snow to create the protective layer of insulation. Now the days are short, with shadows growing longer and longer, as the region close to the Arctic Circle settles in for the long winter night. With solar particles hitting the Earth's magnetic field close to the North Pole, the solar wind brightens the sky with the lights of the Aurora Borealis. Even if reindeer are semi-domesticated, it's their natural instinct to move that sets off the migration. They stay at higher altitudes as long as they find food. But for their survival, they need to find winter pastures. It's another long migration, and the Sami families will work together to bring the herd to safety during the short daylight hours, down to the lowland forests. The Scandinavian Alpine region now looks desolate and devoid of animals. If conditions allow, it can take three to four years until the lemmings build up their population again. And the stage is set for a new drama. The red fox has become the latest intruder in the Nordic mountain landscape. Climate change has opened the door to them.
a reindeer carcass becomes an important source of food for the scavenging red fox and for the crow who dares to challenge the fox for the prize. A reindeer carcass like this one provides an extremely rare feeding opportunity, but it doesn't last long. Now that the lemmings are gone, food abundance is over. The red fox must find more to eat to make it through the brutal winter. And now a new battle is playing out. The red fox is challenging its relative, which has reigned supreme on the tundra. Twice its size, it easily kills an arctic fox. Maybe outsmarting the red fox on one occasion will save this particular arctic fox. But the reality of climate change favors the red fox. It can now venture into lands that used to be out of range. It will outcompete on all fronts for food, taking over dens, and killing arctic foxes and their cubs. Lemmings must also adapt to the changing climate. And maybe still, somewhere under the blanket of snow, the last lemmings survive. Humans will not detect their presence until the next good lemming year. But the lemming couldn't care less about the people above it. In its world, it is still the little giant of the North. <laughs>